Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Kylie. Thank you so much for stopping by. I wanted to sit down and talk about some of the books that I've read semi-recently that I've enjoyed. Um, I'm actively losing daylight, so I'm hoping that it doesn't get too dark while I film. But I hope to get through these just four books relatively quickly and maybe in the future I'll have something more like hashed out. I have really been enjoying watching videos from Pato and Bibliosophie and one of my mutuals, uh, Pages of Carolyn. I love her videos. Just like, I don't know, I think it's like fun to talk about books, especially with people who also have like the same taste in books as you or similar or like somewhat, you know, like the Venn diagram exists, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, it's like gonna be winter. I need, I'm like trying to fill up my arsenal of like activities to do um, when it's super cold outside. So yeah, without any more babbling from me, maybe I will get into this. So the first book that I wanna talk about is by Etel Adnan, Shifting the Silence. This is a poetry collection, but I feel like it's really just kind of little snippets of prose. This was great. This kind of surprised me. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. Um, I think there are themes of, they're very like introspective. There also is a pretty heavy theme of technology and how that has affected our climate and our planet and there's a lot of nature talk in here which is something that also very much resonates with me so i thought i would just read a few blurbs of this i'm not in a hurry to live i'm not in a hurry to die i'm just talking to you it sounds so simple and it is very simple but i feel like there is something like coded within that i feel like a lot of our social interactions in person and online are motivated by some external desire whether that be to like extract from the person they're reaching out to or whatnot but i think there is like to this quote that i'm just talking to you i think there is something like very earnest about that about just wanting to talk to someone for the sake of talking to somebody maybe i'm like over intellectualizing something very simple but i feel like there is like something valuable in that and just thinking about it is very i think there is like something kind of sweet and honest about that statement and I feel like something that I experience in my personal life and like communicating with people is like a hastiness if that's the word to communicate like I need to say what I'm gonna say or else it's like going to be too late or something like that but I think there is something to say about talking for the sake of talking and exchanging with somebody just as it is. And I think that's connection, you know? I feel like having to say something for the sake of something, it's like one-sided. Don't know if that makes sense, but that was what I gleaned from it. So um, there's that. On the topic, there's actually a good one-liner in this. It says, it's not the poet who's the poet, it's only the reader. And I think that's very interesting because I think the poetry is written on the page. Like the words are written on the page. The poet creates the words. But I think the poetry, like the um, quality of it being poetic resides within the reader because the reader will use their own past experiences to inform the way these words like create poetry within them. So yeah, I really enjoy that poetry collection. If you have read Bluettes by Maggie Nelson, that might be up your alley. Um, 
but yeah, it's good prose, I would say. And it's I read it in one sitting, so definitely something pretty, pretty easy. Um, but the uh, return on the time spent reading is certainly exponential as it continues to grow even now. The next book that I have to talk about is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I really enjoyed this. I'm not one for Victorian literature. I think this is Victorian, late Victorian. Okay, I really enjoyed kind of the subject matter and the topics discussed in this. I think there's like heavy emphasis on morality and vanity and goodness and how goodness and vanity kind of compete with each other. And I think we see kind of exaggerated versions of said goodness or said vanity in different characters throughout this novel. And eventually you find out the way society deals with these people and kind of their outcomes. Um, I think those moral characteristics are personified in certain characters, whether that be the painter or Dorian Gray himself, or even, what's his name? Henry, I think is his name, Lord Henry. Um, Harry, Henry, H name, I, I can't remember. But I think this is very interesting. And I think we kind of are able to glean Oscar Wilde's perspective on these different character traits and how people of his day viewed them, but also how I feel like it's still very applicable to how people in this day and age, I guess, um, view people who are vain or view people who are good. Um, the next book that I have to talk about is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is not a book new to a single soul. <laughs> Everyone fucking knows this book and I've just read it and now I'm like taking it upon myself to share this with the masses. Um, the masses being maybe the like two people watching this video. Yeah, I will say this is like a very melodramatic book, but you kind of just have to lean into it for the sake of like the atmosphere. But it's just about these kids in a college and they kill one of their friends. And I feel like the main bulk of the novel is how these kids slash students slash young adults, whatever, um, deal with um, the knowledge that they are responsible for the death of somebody and how that will eventually come to fester within their tiny little souls and, you know, their fates will be determined by whatever external powers exist out there. I will say I tried reading The Goldfinch. I didn't really like it. Maybe I would give it another try because I tried reading it like probably four or five years ago, so a long time ago, and I maybe got like a third or halfway through and then I just gave up. Um, but maybe I will come back to it given how much I liked the last bits of this book. I don't know, I don't really know how much more I could add to the conversation. There is so much already said about this book that I feel like I don't have anything really original to add other than it does have a great plot that is very gripping and as I'm not someone who was particularly like I don't need a plot in a novel I'm more gravitated towards writing and writing style and character development and blah blah but I did appreciate the fact that this had a plot and it was very interesting yeah I, I liked this I enjoyed um, is it like a favorite of all time? Probably not, but I did really, really like this. Um, the only reason why I say it's not like a favorite of all time is just because it's not something that I typically read, but I do like it. Getting into something that I would typically read, I have An Apprenticeship or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector. This is actually my first Lispector. I've since read one other by her, which is the, whatever her little penguin classics one is, I forgot what it was called. I thought that was okay, but I really enjoyed this book. Um, I think I really liked her because I was kind of doing some research on her and she's, one of her 
influence writing influences is Virginia Woolf and Virginia Woolf is like my favorite author of all time and I think the structure of their narratives and their writing styles and like the protagonist sort of introspection like stream of consciousness sort of thing they both kind of track with each other I will say Le Spectre has a bit more of like a romantic style um and I think that's just informed by her living in Brazil and it being written in Portuguese and all of that. Um, I read the translated version, but I wish I knew Portuguese so I could like, I wish I could like learn every language so that I could read every book in the original language it was written in. But fortunately, only now really to a literature, um, literacy level, um, English, but we'll, we'll work on some others maybe. Just love a book about a woman who has no idea what the fuck is going on. Like, she doesn't know, but she's kind of like, I'm gonna trust myself. And then she basically is like being courted by this older professor in like philosophy or something. And I feel like this professor figure is very much like a mirror for her to like look at herself and like, figure out her own shit and like what she values and what her desires are both like out of life and sexually and all of that and yeah like any book about like a woman contemplating I feel like it's just generally going to be a hit for me so I guess just to read a bit of the blurb on the back it says when she meets Ulysses a professor of philosophy an opportunity opens, a chance to escape the shipwreck of introspection and embrace the love, including the sexual love, of a man. There was an afterword written by Sheila Hetty, which she wrote Pure Color, which I have read, which I didn't really like. I love an abstract sort of narrative, but that was just personally too abstract for me. Like, you know, her and her dad are like leaves and I'm like, okay, that's neither here nor there, but... Sheila Hetty says in her afterword, not only to love and to be loved, but also to be worthy of life itself. So it's very much about that. <laughs> love, loving, being loved, and what it means to be alive and to take up space in this world. So yeah, I love this. Let me just find one blurb to give you a little taste of Le Spectre if you've never read Le Spectre before. Um, I'm trying to find like a good one that would like stand well on its own. So here's a little blurb. You can't speak of silence the way you speak of snow. Silence is the profound secret night of the world. So there's that one. What can I do with happiness? What can I do with the strange and piercing peace? which is already starting to hurt me like an anguish, like a great silence of spaces. That little quote is actually one of my favorite bits of the entire novel. That quote very much resonates with me because I feel like in moments of happiness, I'm, alway, I'm already thinking of how this is going to be gone and this happiness is not going to exist in my body, in my brain, in like my feelings for a long time. It's very transient and I think that I'm like I'm simultaneously mourning the absence of that happiness at the same time that that happiness is within me. And I feel like that is very much like articulated in that and it just like kind of made me think about what is the difference between happiness and sadness and in what ways are they like the same thing? And maybe I'm thinking too much about this but I don't know I feel like if it's Le Spectre I don't know if it's possible to think too much because that bitch be thinking but <laughs> yeah okay I am going to end the video here uh hopefully you don't mind the kind of crunchy video quality for my computer webcam I hope to maybe make more videos of this sort or of other sorts I really don't know in the future and yeah I suppose I will talk to you later